Sometimes as a mom, I feel like if I say no to these things, I'm going to be affecting the rest of my child's life. How will they ever get into Juilliard if they aren't in ballet when they're two years old? Hi, my name is Courtney Ellis. I'm a podcaster and the author of Uncluttered, Free Your Space, Free Your Schedule, Free Your Soul. And I'm here to answer some frequently asked questions about decluttering. Why should I declutter my life? Well, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I will say when you have fewer possessions and a little more space in your schedule, you are more able to follow the path that God has set before you. You'll be less overwhelmed, more in tune with the needs of your kids and your family, and it is just so life-giving to live with open hands rather than closed fists around our possessions and our schedule. What does the Bible say about clutter in our lives? Well, the Bible doesn't talk about decluttering per se, but it does talk about following Jesus with our whole heart and soul and mind and strength. And the thing about clutter is it can wear us down. It's a little bit like carrying around a backpack full of bricks and then saying, Jesus, I want to follow you, but I'm really tired. And Jesus says, take off the backpack. So when we have the right amount of possessions, we have what we need, but we don't have so much that it's weighing us down. When we have a schedule that honors God, we're doing the things we need to do, the things we're called to do, but we're not not packing every minute and so we can more easily hear the voice of God. Why can it be hard to live simply? So many reasons. We live in a really cluttered world. There are a lot of wonderful things we might want to buy. Fashion changes every 10 minutes. Our kids are interested in the new toy and the new game. It seems sometimes like the entire world is conspiring to stuff our lives with stuff. But God paints a different picture and issues us this beautiful invitation that says, come and follow me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. And the Christian virtue of simplicity is connected to the Christian joy of freedom. When we have less, we're able to live in ways that honor God more. Where do I begin when I'm overwhelmed about decluttering? Do not start with the junk drawer. You will never make your way out of the junk drawer. Don't start there. I tell people to start either in their closet or on one particular shelf and start there and take those items all off, look through all of them, and then only put back what you absolutely need or regularly use. And the other things, think about where they might go. They might go to Goodwill, Salvation Army, somewhere like that. They might be a blessing to someone else. It is a joy as a parent to get rid of maternity clothes when you're done with that season of life and give them to someone who they will bless. So start small with a focused space that you can finish within a couple of hours. You'll feel so accomplished and you'll wanna do more. How do I decide what to keep of my child's belongings? Two things on that. If they're tiny, if it's a baby and they've outgrown the little baby bathtub, you can decide, okay, I think we're done having kids, so we're gonna give this to a friend, give it to Goodwill. If the kids are older, do not go into their room and go through their stuff in the dead of night and have them wake up and wonder where the toys went. That's a recipe for disaster. Involve your kids in the process. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to foster generosity. So we have friends, for example, that are adopting a foster child. These friends only have daughters, they're adopting a son. And so I was able to go to my boys and say, what are some toys that are still in really good condition, that are fun to play with, that we might be able to give to this family? And they were hesitant at first. They wanted to give away their broken stuff or the stuff they didn't like, the stuff they didn't play with. But when I didn't force it, instead I invited it, they thought about it, they sat with it, and they realized I don't actually need six garbage trucks. Yes, one of my kids had six garbage trucks. So involve them in the process. What clothes do you like the most? What things do you wear the most often, let them be part of things and go at the pace that they're ready to go at. How can I keep my kids from getting over schedule? That is the challenge of the parent in the modern world, isn't it? Because there are so many good things our kids can do, enrichment activities and art and music and sports. And sometimes as a mom, I feel like if I say no to these things, I'm going to be affecting the rest of my child's life. How will they ever get into Juilliard if they aren't in ballet when they're two years old? And we have to start taking that pressure off of ourselves because God doesn't intend for our kids to be scheduled every minute of every day. Boredom 
is a wonderful soil for creativity. And when we learn to, to experience silence and accept silences and space in our lives, we can more easily hear from God. And that starts really young. So for our family, one of the things that works for us is giving the kids one activity per season. So that might be a sport, that might be music, and then suddenly soccer season is over and we transition to basketball. And we specifically look for sports that don't meet on a Sunday morning because we don't want the team to have to compete with God because that builds resentment in multiple ways. What are the benefits from having a less cluttered schedule? There are so many benefits. Our souls long for some breathing space, for some opportunities to have spaces with silence, to be able to be out in nature, to remember why we married our spouse in the first place, because they're pretty great, but we don't know that when we're running at a thousand miles an hour. There are so many benefits to having a less cluttered schedule. One of the biggest is to be able to regularly practice the Sabbath. So taking a day every week where we're not working, it's commanded by God, but it's the one command we kind of treat as optional. But when we're able to keep a weekly Sabbath, not as a reward for doing everything right or finishing our work, but as a gift from God to rest from our labors, Eugene Peterson describes it as a day for praying and playing and really fall into that life of worship. It benefits our souls, our minds, our bodies, our marriages, our children, our communities, our churches everything. There are so many benefits to having a less cluttered life, but that is one of the biggest. What is one way to help keep technology from taking over our family? Yeah, our kids are watching, aren't they, friends? They see everything we do. And my kids have this laser tag set. They were playing laser tag the other day. And my daughter came over and she said, mommy, I shoot the phone. I shoot your phone. And I said, okay, that is a sign that the technology has gotten out of control for me. But the thing is, technology is engineered to make it alluring, to make it addictive. And so it's not about I'll try harder tomorrow because we might have a great tomorrow. And then the next day we're back on the phone 6,000 times. What my husband and I do is we actually have a lock box that cannot be opened that has a timer. We put the phone in there, dinner time, bedtime. We're totally disconnected. We try to use screen time with our kids as a tool and not as the default. Like, well, you should watch a show because mommy's busy, daddy's busy. We try and it's a moving target because technology is always changing, but we try to keep those things within bounds. And I'm in it with you. It is a moving target for sure. How can we keep the Sabbath as a family? I love this question because the Sabbath has always been a family practice. It's practiced by the family of God. It's practiced by the church community. And it's something that's difficult to do on our own. So as a family, we take from the time the kids get out of school on Friday until the same time on Saturday as our family Sabbath. My husband and I are pastors. They make us work Sundays. So that is our family Sabbath. And we start with, with joy and celebration. So the kids have a treat. It's usually popsicles. They sell them at the school. It's an easy win. And and then we spend time together as a family and we make sure everyone gets the type of rest that they need. For me, that I need to go on a walk. I need to have a little time by myself on a walk. For the kids, often that's playing a game together as a family, that's wrestling, that's going outside and throwing the ball. For my husband, he needs some time with a book. And so we think about each member of the family, how do they need to rest? How do they play well? Um, and how is worship a piece of that? So we're pastors, we worship on Sundays, but also we involve some worship as a family. We'll sing around the piano or we'll read together, or we will um, find a way of practicing our devotional life in prayer as a family. Sabbath is a family practice and the joys grow when we do it together. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to like this video and check out my book, Uncluttered, Free Your Space, Free Your Schedule, Free Your Soul, for more details about decluttering. Subscribe to Focus on the Family if you haven't already, so you don't miss any videos just like this one.